Samantha Brown, you've been all over the world thanks to your Travel Channel shows. You have a new show coming on PBS. Tell us about it. Uh, it's called uh, Samantha Brown's Places to Love, and it's all about finding the destinations, the experiences, and most importantly, the people who make us feel like we're really a part of a place. <laughs> Everyone talks about going where the locals go and doing what the locals do, and I'm sort of defining that. And for me, I feel like it's when you feel like you belong. So where are those places that we as travelers can go to anywhere in the world but feel like we belong there? And, and you had a lot of episodes in the U.S., but in you also US. have some international ones. And by the way, the show is premiering early next year. Yes, uh, 2017, would that be? Is that where? No, 2018. 18. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I've been traveling this year, so I missed a whole year. Uh, January 6th, 2018, on your PBS channels. Yeah. Uh, and you went to Houston, Ireland, Shanghai. Yeah, so it was 13 episodes. We started in Houston, which of course just suffered just destructed, destructive floods. Um, and we just got word back that everyone we featured is okay. Good. So we think that's going to be our very first episode. But all around the world, China, Shanghai, Xi'an, Canada, it's their 350th anniversary of being a country, I believe, or 375th. Um, so it's just, we went all over. Are you still working with Travel Channel? What do you make of their reality-based shift to, to reality programming, yeah, essentially? I'm, I'm not working with them. I haven't for a few years. And I think if, it, if people get excited about that, I think it's a great way to go. I personally feel like a lot of the shows show places that um, we'll never get to go to. Or maybe the, 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 these exclamation point experiences that are wonderful on TV, but I wanted to make sure that everything I did was something that anyone mm. could actually show up into because travel should be accessible. It shouldn't mm. only be for these mind-blowing explorations mm. and these once-in-a-lifetime trips. It's all, also about the weekend trip. It's all mm. also about going to a country you've never been to or maybe a state or a town in your own state. So that's what we sort of try to incorporate into the show is just accessibility of travel. I think that's what made your show so successful, which was you would go into a hotel and point out you know, the carpeting on the floor or the marble in the bathroom or the chandelier in the lobby. It was so exciting. I, I, <laughs> as a kid, we stayed in motor lodges. So now I had this show where I was staying in luxury hotels that were $700 a night. And I just like took every toiletry I could, even in the slippers, because you're like, oh my gosh. Don't tell anyone. No, no, exactly. Well, I always tell people, you can take those toiletries and the slippers. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah, th th those yeah, are yours. Take the yeah, slippers. Take the, just don't take the towels or the bedding. That's it. Or, or the bathrobe. Don't oh, do no, that. don't take the bathroom. That's right. All right. They will charge you for that. As a content creator, what is your, what is your take on the shift to digital? Uh, has that helped things for you? I, I think so. I mean, I, again, I like all forms of media, and I think it informs everyone. And what digital gives you are these quick hits, because I feel like the people's um, uh, their their attention spans are quicker in the right. digital world, and so you need to get them immediately. So that enables me to still be on television and tell a longer story, and then be able to break that up digitally. So we can I can show my content in so many different areas that will get a younger audience, will get an older audience, and it'll appeal to even more people. Well, speaking of a younger audience. Audience. I mean, are you noticing this renewed interest in travel, especially among millennials? Because if you look at the travel and leisure stocks and you talk to their CEOs, they'll tell you yes. It's always about the millennials, absolutely. Everyone loves the, 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 the youngins, as we call them, and, and absolutely. And I think what I love about the millennial aspect of travel, which is far different from my own, is that they know already they don't have to go to Paris and hit all the must-sees. Hmm. That idea of we have to wait in a two-hour line to get to the top of the Eiffel Tower, that millennial already knows, no, I don't need to do that. I want to go to this little side street to this mom-and-pop bistro. Hmm. They're already where like, maybe I am now, or maybe I was 10 years ago, and I love that about them. They're adventurous, they're, they want to get the, the local scene, and those must-sees and must-dos are not so important. With the exception maybe of Versailles, because I waited on a two-hour line. <laughs> That's right. We all have to go there sometime, exactly. So Which I, we have to I see that, right? Bite the bullet. <laughs> yes. uh, let me also ask you about your, your best travel tips, uh, right? Because the airports, it's not getting easier oh, over not. the years. The TSA no. lines are only getting longer. No, they really are. And I think, I mean, I always tell people, you want to um, arrive at the airport. I mean, I fly out of New York airports, which are crazy busy. Mm. So I get to the airport an hour and a half of the boarding time of the flight. And this is the number one tip I tell anyone. Don't base your arrival to the airport on the departure time of your flight because your flight's gonna board 45 minutes before that time and you need to be ready for that flight then. So make sure that everything's based off of that. How do you get a good deal on airfare and also cruises? Because uh, all these storms, I'm sure, has depressed the price of, of you know, cruise trips in the coming months. I'm a big fan of alerts. I don't have my own crystal ball and I rely on alerts. One of the best alerts I've gotten for 20 years now is airfarewatchdog.com. Uh, hmm. It's run by a wonderful man named George Hobica. He's been following the industry for close to, you know, you know, easily over two decades. 
and I sign up for alerts and I know when the price is. And I think we were talking about this before. You sign up for an, a price alert on a, a certain flight. You wanted to go to Paris. So you just follow that flight and then you know, wait a minute, that's a good deal. But mm -hmm. a part of knowing what's a good deal is understanding the history of the price. So mm -hmm. sign up for alerts and just kind of monitor where those prices are. From now until mid-December is one of the best times to fly in terms of price. Average price of an airline ticket is about 250 bucks mm -hmm. anywhere in the United States because p kids are back in school. Mm -hmm. There's also something that people don't know called a dead week. It's a terrible name, but a great idea. And these are the weeks that there's no one's traveling, and those are the best prices. So it's the day right after Labor Day that week, and then right after Thanksgiving up until mid-December. Those are amazing times to, now obviously if you have jobs or if you have kids, right. you can't do it. But of course, there's a huge group of people who can travel whenever they want. All right. This is a good time to travel. And just quickly, before we let you go, you have an incredible story, just in terms of how you got your job at the Travel Channel years back. You want me to Can tell that story? Briefly. <laughs> okay, go, okay, go into briefly. it. <laughs> All right, so I was missing a connecting flight, Washington, Dulles, very t uh, difficult uh, airport to get through. And um, the plane, I got to the gate and they said, we already called it, you can't get on. I said, please let me on. And they're like, okay, go down and check. So I went down the gate and it was one of those flights that you had to walk on the tarmac to get to. The jetway didn't reach the flight. And so I'm walking to the gate, uh, the plane, and a guy stops and said, you can't get on that plane. I'm like, please, you don't understand. I th I've been waiting on tables. I think I can get this job. And he's you like, have an audition. I have an audition to make. Sorry, I have an audition to make and I gotta get on that flight. And so the man walked up and I saw him walk him to the cockpit and talk to the pilot because the pilot could overrule his decision and I just picked up my bag and I ran I put myself under the nose of the plane huh. and I said please and the pilot looked down on me and, and just and did one of these and I'm, that's when I knew I got the job obviously that's something I couldn't do today post you know 9-11 but right. this was uh, in the early 90s and I got on a flight that I was going to miss and if I was going to miss that flight I wasn't going to get the job and, and that was after waiting tables for what 10 years yes 10 years 10 so, years in New York City which is really 20 years <laughs> so, yeah. so what is your advice for young people starting out right now oh my god and want to do what I do Anything. I mean, oh, yeah, I, well I just think just, just. I mean, I started so young doing what I wanted to do, and just now I feel like I'm in my zone. So mm. never give up, and mm. never think that there's a certain age where you should have accomplished your dream. Keep going for it. it you will get it. All right. Samantha Brown, nice thank you so much. Yeah, nice to be here. Great to see you. <laughs> All right, I'm Scott Gam, and you're watching The Street.